Are you a fan of Alien, The Thing, or True Detective Night Country? Want a chilling story to listen to on those cold winter nights? Then you need to tune into The White Vault, a fully voiced horror fiction podcast from the folks at Fool and Scholar Productions. The award-winning found footage show centers around an international rescue and repair team sent to discover the source of a mysterious signal at a remote Arctic research station. The weather takes a turn for the worst, the team becomes trapped, and you guessed it, spookies ensue. <laughs> Check out The White Vault, available for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts. Subscribe now and discover the unimaginable horrors that await beneath the ice. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Windbreakers podcast. I'm a little stunned because Marty just put some 3D glasses on without telling us he was going to do that. Not 3D what? glasses. They are Eclipse glasses. Uh, he's lying. He's finally watching Way of Water. <laughs> oh. That's the way God intended during a podcast. Oh, well, yeah. Fucking Eclipse fascists. Just hogging all the Eclipse to themselves over in the Midwest. Yeah. Oh, we, yeah. I mean, we do. We have like, yeah. all of it here. Anyway, welcome to the podcast. I'm Yahtzee. I'm joined by Frost and Marty, as always. Hello, everyone. Hey, all. And we thought we'd talk about the subject of save systems in games, the ups and downs, the evolution over the years, and uh, some of the approaches to saves we found interesting. This uh, topic came about because I've been complaining to anyone who'll listen lately about the problem I've been having with Dragon's Dogma 2 and its one solitary save slot. Mm -hmm. Is there any excuse for that in this day and age, I ask you? Listen, there's not one of the weeks you were out, I made the bold claim that every game should have 100 save slots, and for every save slot below 100, it should have a point docked from it. So, I love how you preface that with saying, you'd say that to anyone who would listen, so I'm just imagining you asking your grocer. Yeah. I ask you, yeah. like, is, this, is yes. there any reason for this? Sir, how much sliced turkey do you want? I don't care. <laughs> half, half a pound of potatoes, please, and let me tell you about this save system, bollocks. Going to them. No, I mean, you're the one with the most unpleasant experience. Go ahead and start her off with the obviously the biggest pitfall of having a single save. Yeah. Well, because uh, what happens if it auto saves right before something fucks up? Like, uh, say, if you were playing Half Life and the auto save cracked off just as you were falling down a pit and did some spikes. Oh, you just God. have to continually relive that moment like some kind of hellish purgatory. I yeah. deeply do not trust um, auto saving in games. Same. Even if I see the auto save icon and it says saved, if I can manually save, I will 100% manually save after. Yep. Show of hands, yep. chat. Anyone who manual saves when they're stopping playing a game, even though the auto save is ostensibly a few seconds. Maybe that's a that. generation thing. Maybe like I... young, younger people don't are like, fuck it, the computer will take care of everything for me. Well, I was kind of. It's hmm. just one of those things they don't think about until it's corrupted. And then you're like, oh damn, whatever yeah. happened to my save? Yeah, I think I was uh, I was uh, ruined by Half Life. The original Half Life was where the first game I remember just automatically auto saving every few rooms. Sure. And uh, I guess I kind of got used to that because then I like a few years back I'd go back and play the original Quake and be playing merrily and uh, then get killed and suddenly oh I'm back at the start of the level with no weapons. Shit. This is freaking I imagine. No, and not even, it's not even a personal thing. I talk to the autosave after it's gone, where it's like, I'm glad you did that, but I'm going to go and ahead and manually save mine right yeah. next to the one that you made. And so it's just, yeah. to me, is that arrogance? Is that hubris to design a game that uh, it's like, no, I will save for you and it will be one. I don't know if that's worse than the ones that's like, you will save for you <laughs> manually not, at checkpoints. It's, it's not hubris. It's uh, multiple failure points. That's just good engineering. It's good engineering to have one? It's good engineering to have as many failure points as possible. In case sure. one of them breaks down, you got all the backups. I think it's, and then yeah. if they all break at the same time, it's something majestic like a firecracker. But no, that's yeah. what I'm saying. It's like not having that backup is, that's what I'm thinking. Hubris to go, ah, oh, my game won't crash. You yeah. Are you insinuating that I don't know how to code? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> no, exactly. You can't you can't predict when a game is going to just fuck up, as Dragon's Dogma 2 didn't. But uh we'll leave I'll leave that for the Wednesday's review. Exactly. 
uh yeah and like we're we're uh old enough to remember when saving was well i guess yahtzee and i are probably old enough to remember when saving wasn't a thing in games before it was eventually a thing in games um yeah you, back you in know, the day you just had to start the game and then play the whole thing and one play the whole thing because games were short enough or they were sort of designed to be kind of arcadey ports or uh maybe they had a password system where you had uh oh i love a bunch those. of weird letters or love those. icons or things like that which was nice because ostensibly you could if you rented a game you could have passwords in it you could share passwords with your friends you could yeah um, that, that that kind of thing made sort of the, the sharing of that information um i don't know nice in a quaint way Bit of a pain in the ass to type it in every time, of course. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Especially ones that were like symbols, and you'd look at it and be like, "What did I just yeah, draw?" Like, didn't you have those yeah. uh, with some of the Disney games you played recently, Frost, or some of the? Yeah, yeah. I was yeah. gonna say that. Um, I wanted to say Rayman did that too, but mm-hmm. I don't think it was icons. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, it also starts to get you a little curious though, because you go, "How does this know? How does this know what I was doing with this icon here?" And then you probably start figuring out, "Oh." This this goes to level. This goes to lives. This goes to whatever. And then you yeah, tweak yeah. it a little bit, like, oh yeah, uh, sure. I had ninety nine lives last time I played this. Of course, it was yep. definitely that one. Yeah, that was the that's the whole floor of the system, I suppose. But you know, for people trying to have fun in their own way, why stop them? Yeah. But before long, of course, uh, the game creators realized they could just save some data to the media to uh, record the progress in the game. And I feel like in certain sectors, at least. Uh, some game designers were a little bit self-conscious about letting you save willy-nilly wherever you wanted and started mm-hmm. introducing uh, saving as more of a gameplay mechanic that you had to like use up resources on or whatever. Yeah, because I think that's where if you, if you are saving wherever you want, whenever you want, I feel like you are much more likely to reach a scenario like you talked about earlier with Dragon's Dogma to where you could really put yourself in a corner. Right. Mm-hmm. You could sort of, uh, uh, you know, back yourself into an unwinnable situation because where you saved, whereas if the game is in control over you can only save in <clears throat> these safe rooms like in Resident Evil or these specific chambers like in Super Metroid, um, they would yeah, know have, that. Yes. Yeah. I have experience with that because uh, I think the save system of Star Trek Vagabond was a pain in the ass because you can't let them save anywhere because certain data uh it relies on the way the room is built so if you reload mm-hmm. the game inside a room with like the, all the cutscenes half wired up then things tend to fuck up yeah so i oh. made it so it only you can only save while on the ship and even that's caused enough problems but of course the other reason why uh like playstation one games uh usually would have force you to save at save points even if you couldn't in other ports of the game like in tomb raider uh was because there just wasn't that much uh, room on the cartridge to store information and if you knew, if you could like isolate specific points in the game where people would be saving, yeah. uh, that, then you wouldn't have to record like uh, map data where they were uh, in terms of X and Y coordinates and everything mm-hmm. else. There was a lot less information that needed to be saved. Yeah, even uh, even games like uh, uh, that you could save anywhere would oftentimes, like I think of Ocarina of Time, you could save anywhere, but if you saved in a dungeon. Uh, and then restart it, it would start you at the beginning of the dungeon. Like, if you mm-hmm. saved on the overworld, it would start you, like, either, I think at Hyrule Castle or the last, like, zone you'd entered. So it was ostensibly saving anywhere, but not at the exact position in the world. It was sort of at the, okay, we'll put you right at the front of this zone that you saved. So it felt like it was kind of best of both worlds and that kind of thing. I do think designers worry about players cheesing it. I mean... Oh, the... that, yeah, that's the Elden Ring thing. You can jump off yeah. in a very specific cliff and uh, dep- depending on where you die, it'll just put you into the next zone. Because Jack does- literally did that live uh, during one of our Elden Ring plays the other year. Yeah, yeah. where he's like, "Oh, I'm going to skip an entire section of this game by choosing, knowing exactly where to die, so that the game is like, eh, fuck it, I guess you're over here." Yeah, I know, let him have his fun. And how did we get away from that? Now you can have this thing where it's sort of like, I guess, instance saving. Roguelikes uh, do it very commonly, where well, let's just say, I don't know, your your system just closes down for some reason you boot the game back up and you're exactly where you were before what how is that because we i was raised on the whole like don't touch anything while this is auto saving it'll corrupt you'll get a virus you'll get syphilis don't touch it but now this is like always saving i don't, I, I don't know how that works yeah dark souls does that somehow i don't i don't really understand it. yeah dark souls do will it. do that um, at worst if you're inside a boss room it'll just put you on the outside yeah how does that work uh, 
Do you think letting the game quick save at any point and reload at any point takes something away from the game? Because I feel like some designers think that it does. Oh, I mean, saves uh, coming, if, is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, saves coming. Like Half Life, yeah. let your save scum. Uh, the original Quake, when I play it these days, I practically bind quick save to one of the mouse buttons. Sure. I, I mean, do that with a lot of old games, like you know, emulators, uh, you know, using rewind features and pause and save yeah. state features where the games didn't exist. I think there's a concern that if you have that, you can just cheese any of the challenges, and justifiably somewhat. If you do, you remember the original Prey, not the latest Prey, the original Prey, Vagina Doors. Yeah, with the Vagina Doors. <laughs> uh, that had a very weird uh, death system that possibly comes out of the feeling that if you can quick save anywhere, then it's basically just you're not dying at all. It's you're going back like seconds at most. So we had to go to like the Native American spirit realm and fight yeah, your way out. Yeah, this gameplay mechanic. When you ran out of health, instead of dying and having to reload a save, you got transported to a spirit realm and you had to shoot little uh, flying griblies to restore your health and mana. And then you'd mm -hmm. be sent right back to the world where exactly yeah. where you'd been without ever having to die. And nobody really liked that. No. Like, the game got a lot of shit for that mechanic, even though it was functionally the same as, as, a, as a save scum system. Mm -hmm. Why do you it think was like, that was? It was save scumming, but with a bit of punishment. And I think it's one of those ideas <laughs> that on paper or the first time, you're like, this is pretty neat. And then you're like, oh, I'm going to have to do this every time. Wait a minute, this has gotten way less neat. I mean, I think it's forcing the player to... You know, save scumming takes away consequences of actions, right? Yeah. Um, and so it's, I guess, forcing the player to to deal with the consequences of their actions, whether that's positive or negative. For me, it kind of messed with the context. It was like, this person within context is immortal. Why, are, why is the enemy opposing them? Yeah. Clearly, this is a futile struggle. This yeah, they should know this thing is coming is... back no matter what we so throw you, at it. You say, you say that, but to me it was more of like a Groundhog Day kind of thing, where I'm immortal, I know I'm immortal, not everyone knows I'm immortal though, and they still well act very normally. Well, you don't go back in time when you die, you just like, respawn exactly where you were standing. Sure, presumably all the, really all the enemy aliens would have seen you doing that. Like, yeah. I, I don't like multiple saving. I'll have the auto save, I'll have my manual save, but the first one that I actually had multiple saves on was, was going back through Thief 2, where it's just like, oh, what do these doors lead to in this other way? And I have the one that I'm consistently saving on, but then it's like, this feels like a branching point. So I'll go ahead and put a save here. And then when it branches over here, I'll go ahead and put one there. And then I'll do my main one and reroute through the entire way. So it feels, uh, yeah, it feels like metagaming, but also gives it this strange depth of like, I'm a time traveling thief. Yeah, or like you're storyboarding. Yeah. yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I think, I think it's more fun to play Thief 2 without saving mid-mission. That's for the Thief higher 2... difficulty, you know? Well, Thief is a game that gives you a lot of outs. If someone catches you, you could always just run away and hide somewhere. Or you could just like fight them with your sword and kill them. Mm -hmm. So, like, you know, there's you have to like do quite a lot to fuck up if you're not playing in like super hard difficulty. In sure. I think it's more fun to just try and live with your mistakes. I suppose, but I don't know. The world's just so nice. You know, I don't want to break that flow. You ever see that Nicolas Cage movie Next? Of course. Yeah, where you could like predict the next whatever. Yeah, there's a sequence in that which basically is the act of save scumming captured on sure. film. Yeah. Where you see like Nicolas Cage is trying to like predict the best way to walk through like this uh, maze or something, mm -hmm. and uh, how the film portrays that is you see multiple Nicolas Cages split off from him yeah. to try every possible turn until he finds the right one. Yeah, I'm Nicolas Cage. I am nexting. Just You're nexting. Oh no, I'm nexting. I'm nexting. <laughs> it's uh, it's funny because there's also games that um take that concept and uh, kind of take control of it themselves. Uh, I think 13 Sentinels, he just rim did that to where you almost had this flow chart of moments and you mm -hmm. could choose to go back to them. I know that 999, which is like a time travel visual novel puzzle game does a similar thing where like Frost was almost talking about creating his own junction points via, via uh, save states like the game builds those into the narrative and you are purposely supposed to go back and then see, oh, what happens if you take the other fork in the road and kind of mm. dealing with like the multiverse is both of those things happening simultaneously. Um, which that's, I guess, just, you know, some in a long line of games that did something with saving that was more interesting than just, oh, okay, you're pausing and when you come back, you can unpause. Um, 
you know, yeah. Resident Evil is a game I, I think of as an early example of a game that does something interesting with saving by taking um, consumable ink ribbons that take up a inventory space in a game with a very limited inventory space and have them tied to the number of times you could save. I hmm. think that works for Resident Evil because Resident Evil is, like most survival horrors of its ilk, has very firm progress. Mm -hmm. Like if you explore an area, solve a puzzle, and blah, 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 kill the enemies in a certain area, you've made progress. Yeah. You know, like, you know, you're not going to do anything that's going to be like a step back. Yeah. So saving doesn't feel quite so frustrating. I remember like the original Daikatana, when it originally came out, had uh, limited save gem systems, and nobody liked it because uh, you were never certain, because the, the way Ramiro designed maze like levels, you were never sure if you were actually making progress on anything you did. And it just doesn't, like, it feels like it makes sense in the structure of a Resident Evil game where it's like, oh, you need to make de decisions to, do you carry extra ammo or do you want to save space in your inventory in case you find items or do you want more healing items or do you want to bring yes. keys with you? So it just, it also, you know, yeah. compounds those decisions. It also works in survival horror because it teaches mm -hmm. you that uh, you need to be careful about your decisions. You need to edge forward carefully because if you get overwhelmed and killed, you have to go back to the last save slot, chum. Yeah. Ooh, there's there's no, no easy out. We're not just going to reload at the start of the last fight. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It's as much as progress in the game through like actually beating the game versus like just exploring the, uh, the different mechanics, so to speak. Like In Thief, I remember one path was um, you go through and you're essentially being framed for murder when you were trying to murder, sort of. And that was a split, and I was like, ooh, what happens if I like completely surpass this and go all the way around and no one sees it and that sort of emerged where uh garrett discovers the body and it's like oh damn what happened here so it was kind of interesting and it's not so much it was difficult to do it's i really wanted to see that whereas in disco elysium yeah i died many times to very like horrible roles but i, I lived with those consequences because it felt like it was very ingrained into the structure whereas uh the immersive sim element of thief was more about like this is how the world interacts and i wanted oh. to see all the world interactions more so than just beating it Mm -hmm. It's like that's it almost it opens itself up to a different kind of metagame like with um, Terraria was one of the ones I put on here. The way it works is your character has a save and your world has a save very similar to Minecraft in that way. But again, it's the character save that's important. So you can have like this level 70 character and you could put all this stuff on it and then go to a different world in the later game. It almost asks you to do so because you need to get specific materials and it's very limited materials loading into this world so you are now operating across multiple saves that are interacting with each other or you could just visit your friends you know they just start a new world and you're like hey look at all my gear you know and it, i like that it's sort of like you know what it's more than just a save system it's actually it's, it's a resource itself yeah this is just wacky yeah. nonsense ARPGs do that. They, they'll have an inventory in the game that can um, you can access it through any character that you have, but it's very limited, right? So you're like, hey, I found this cool little item for a thief, but I'm a barb. I'm going to go ahead and just put that in there, and if I do a thief character, he can access it. Mm -hmm. It's like a little mm -hmm. love letter to yourself. <laughs> do you write love letters wondered... to yourself? Do not. <laughs> <laughs> I always wondered how, how much you could do with that as a game mechanic, the ability to sort of open portals to other save files and sort of greet yourself and like exchange goods and say hi yeah we we talked about that uh a couple times uh, like i i feel like we we talked about that in like a call or a meeting once about how like could you toy with like what could you do with the concept of save files that sort of um recontextualizes them or or you know does something interesting that games really haven't done yet because we've seen, you know, the, the uh, a recent wave, especially in indie games, of stuff like Undertale and um, Inscription and Doki Doki Literature Club, which like use the concept mm. of saving files to your hard drive on your PC um, mm. as a means of being able to like interact with that in an interesting way. Which I don't know if Metal Gear Solid was the first one to do that with Psychomantis's obviously little like barbs if you played other Konami games. Um, yeah, you can never do much more than sort of fun gimmicks with it. Wasn't that a Fable thing? Fable? Yeah, like if you had a recent, uh, a, an old save on a different Fable game, like the second one would start you off different or something or other? Essentially, I mean, that you could access there, your yeah. saves. I don't know if it was Fable. It was some medieval game I didn't play. 
Yeah, there are I mean, games it... where you can do that, like Mass Effect and uh, Dragon Age. You could like import saves from the previous games in the series to like. Yeah, and even like password stuff. Um, handheld games like Golden Sun and the, the Zelda Game Boy Color games had things where you'd beat one game, get a really in depth password, and if you put that in when you started the next game, it sort of almost felt like you were carrying your save file over mm. ostensibly. Um, yeah. Yeah, there's also, it, it feels like a well-placed or well-created save point also acts as like a bit of a reprieve. Um, I always think of the the save rooms in, in Resident Evil, whether it's, you know, one or even Resi mm. 4 as like moments to catch your breath, like the music changes, the, 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 you know, you enter one and it is safe. Like it is literally ah, a yes. safe room. Uh, save, save systems as a method for establishing narrative and mood yes yeah I about yeah, that. Like yeah the, even the, little... the, the couches in ico yes like, just oh, saved yeah. by having a nice having a lovely sit down with your girlfriend yeah, yeah. And it has bizarre. one of the nicest little details where if you uh close the game and then start it back up sometimes they'll be on the couch and they'll both be asleep so like you'll yeah. be sleeping and like she'll have her head on your shoulder and then you'll both wake up and go on your adventure and like that was such a neat little detail yeah it's uh, nice when games make lemonade out of lemons that way. Yeah, it just puts these. thought into something that really doesn't need the thought put in, but is appreciated. I mean, I like uh, the save points in Silent Hill 2 as well. How they were literally, literally just red squares, and you yeah. instantly noticed them because they were the only point of colour in this incredibly drab, miserable yeah. world. Yeah. Well, not... What was it? Uh, the new Amnesia game. Couldn't you only save in the... In the middle bunker? Yes. Yes, that was like that game's gimmick. It was uh, immersive sim adjacent. And there was only mm -hmm. one save point in the, right in the middle of the game. And you just had to like go on expeditions out to the furthest reaches of the game and then hope you could get back alive. Mm -hmm. Slightly less traumatized. Uh, yeah, I mean, I enjoy that. The You can only save at these locations for a bit of reprieve. Depends on the game, I suppose, if it's not an absolute trudge that you're doing. Like, uh, I guess Signalis, that did not vibe with that save system. It's very similar to the Silent Hill 2 save system. Yeah, I figured as much. Yeah. Yeah, like weirdly so. Like that's why I, I it makes me think Signalis was made by someone who just assumed that the way Silent Hill 2 did it was how you were supposed to do it. The way things are is the way things are. The game has yeah. to be a pain, so when they save it feels good. <laughs> yeah, I mean there's also like save <laughs> systems do can feel like a reward. Um, you know, I play a lot of Metroidvanias and and when you're going in an uncharted area and you're like man i am running low on health and like running low on supplies and i could use a bench right now in you know uh in hollow knight or i can use one of those sort of energy revitalization chambers in super metroid or those fucking what is castlevania those like tetrahedrons those like weird 3d shapes yeah, in the Night, which i never really understood weird d20 things it's weird yeah. to say that a save file can be used as a reward considering it is like a fundamental and necessary aspect of games these days yeah yeah what but it's, i guess it's the same as like i don't know if you're if you're on a long trip and you're you're driving through like the nevada desert and you're like ooh, i'm getting like under a quarter tank seeing a gas station will feel like a reprieve <laughs> like even though you're going there yeah, to fucking pay money to fill your car up um that's what it think, kind of feels like to me in those games. I love how you went for gas here. I was thinking, like, you just busting for a piss, you know? And it's like, it'd be nice to get to a gas station, but I will just pull over and have a go. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> it's the I equivalent think, of saves coming. The interesting, <laughs> the interesting approach that Dark Souls takes is that it sort of differentiates saves that you go back to when you quit the game and go back in and saves that you go back to when you die. Yeah. If you quit the game and go back in, it just takes you right back to where you were, as you said. It's yeah. pretty much saving all the time somehow. Kind of like the last but action when, you did. Yeah. yeah. But when you die, you go back to bonfires. Because the like quit, having to quit the game or pause the game because it's time for dinner is something that you can't help. Whereas death is very specifically a uh, punishment for fucking up. Yeah. I think it's probably the best approach to sort of differentiate the two. Uh, the two. But would like would a game like Dark Souls would lose a lot if you were allowed to uh, save whenever you want, wherever you wanted, how many times? 
Like, I, I well, got the sense fortress. I'm just going to save scum to get myself through these fucking well, snakes. If you oh, could, well, if you could, well, yes, if you could save scum, it would uh, be kind of ruined. But uh, if you couldn't uh, quit at any time because you could only quit while you're at a bonfire, that would just be annoying because you might get called away. Like some, like your grandmother might fall off a ladder, and you might have oh, a no, swiftly, granny, granny, get off that ladder. I'm in swiftly get off the computer. So you might have to swiftly get off the computer and help her. And that's not anything you or the game can help. Phil, yeah. this is more an argument for Dark Souls having a pause than being able to <laughs> yeah. whatever you want. Well, actually, well, true. I mean, mm. yeah, the non-online from software games have pause, and uh, I I tend to relish it. Oh yeah. I'll I'll just I'm playing Sekiro. I'll just pause when I don't need to, just because I can. Just as <laughs> he's winding up. Is... Yes, yeah. <laughs> yes. You're all dancing to my tune now, assholes. Uh, I like. Uh, there's there's also games that um, use their save points as their own internal risk reward. Uh, Shovel Knight had checkpoints throughout the levels that you could either cross, and they would just act as a checkpoint. Or if you were confident, you could destroy the checkpoint and you'd get a bunch of money for it, but you wouldn't have a checkpoint. And so it, it felt like one of those like small tweaks to difficulty that was player by player of, or do you value being able to restart the level halfway through or do you just want you know to, to kind of go all in and really really push your chips in and, and take yeah. the money? It definitely feels like a wager. I say, yeah, um, like that one boss fight in Undertale where you can s score extra damage if you wager that you're not going to get hit in the next round. <laughs> oh, I kind of like those things in games. I like when it gives you like you don't have to do this, but if you're really cocky and or if you have a crippling gambling addiction. <laughs> yeah, always snap. He says, I always yeah. snap. <laughs> I always snap. First thing, yeah. it's never, it's never done me wrong. Doesn't uh, Ori do that? You have save resources. Uh, yes, that's yeah. a, almost a unique approach. You uh, can use a resource to place to plonk down a bonfire, <laughs> if you will, at any time. Hmm. So you could. I thought you that was really neat. your own save points. Yeah, it's funny yeah. how the sequel didn't have it because it was like the main unique selling point. I'd say. Well, did something with it though, right? Or uh, did it just have more uh, <clears throat> liberal checkpoints? I guess throughout the level. I can't remember that. that far back. I, I think yeah. so. Yeah. Just I do like the idea it. of like this thing is a real pain in the ass, and I finished it, so I'm gonna fucking put down a checkpoint right here because I don't want to have to deal with this one obstacle again, which everyone has has those in games. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. There's another. There was a 3D platformer a few years ago, an indie one called Demon Turf, that did the same thing. I think you could like place three checkpoints throughout levels, and mm. you know you could choose when and where if you wanted to use them early. You just wouldn't have them late. Um, Final mm. Fantasy VII, the original, also weirdly has, you know, like a lot of RPGs, it has um, set save points or save on the overworld. Uh, but you get one portable save point that you can place down in the final dungeon, since the final dungeon is pretty long. And you can choose where in the final dungeon you want to place it. So you can place it mm. halfway down, or you can wait all the way till right before you fight Sephiroth. Um, it, it's, yeah, it's kind of weird that it... Uh, only uses it once, which are, you know, I, I bring up JRPGs for a lot of things, but there was a few examples when I was thinking about save points of games that um, did something neat with them. Chrono Trigger, which, uh, Yahtzee, you played the other summer. Uh, um, there's one section where you go into a sewer and it tells you there's like monsters in the sewer and you got to be quiet. And so there's a couple things you could do. You could like there's like trash and if you kick it. The monsters will come out. There's certain uh, like graded floors, and if you run over them instead of walking, a monster will come out. But at the end of it, there's a save point. And if you go up to the save point, the game gives you the save point chime, like the little brink, and that noise summons the monster. And so it's like the uh, one part in the game that does it to where it's like, oh, every other save point is safe in the game except for this one. Like this one will fuck you up if you if you touch it, which I always found really cute. That's kind of fun. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Games that, that games that fuck with save points that fuck with you. Like I was just wondered what how people would react if Dark Souls had a bonfire mimic enemy. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Could God, you imagine like my ideas? Yeah. <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> Nothing is sacred then. Like, oh, the amount of trauma you'd cause. Yeah. Uh, how many games now? Those bonfires have been trusted. Granted, yeah. how are you doing? Lords Lords of the Fallen has those. Oh, really? Yeah. Bonfire yeah. mimics. Absolute dicks those are, and you, you're just like I can't trust anything. Anything could just eat me in this whole yeah. game. 
I think it was I think it was a bonfire. I'm not sure what it was. Anything can eat me. But I, I'm not sure how I feel about this sort of um you're essentially uh, not incentivized to save if you if you don't feel the pressure of the game sort of weighing down upon you. But what if then it crashes but you were oh so good you got to like the halfway point without saving, you're like, damn. How was well, I supposed you know. to, you know, assume that the game would just crash on me? When I pay for these games, they tend to be finished. Well, save early, save often. That was the old Sierra Creda. <laughs> well, she, yeah. Um, that's why I say there should be a distinction between having to leave saves and just getting punished for dying saves. There you go. It does feel like they're two different things, right? And I guess yeah. Dark Souls handles them differently a bit, but um, yeah, I don't know. Like, I, I, anytime I go back and play an older game on an emulator, and even uh, like Nintendo's official emulators on Switch for the NES and, and SNES have uh rewind and save state features that just like they even realize like listen the way games are designed in the the 80s and 90s a lot of them we understand is frustrating as shit so if you want to get through the game here you go like a lot of those disney collections and stuff have those things and honestly that's the only way i can can get through those games yeah because a lot of the games from that era were designed in the arcade tradition which Mm -hmm. stayed within mindsets for way too bloody long yeah (laughs) where everyone had where everything had to be stealing your quarters. They should still do that. The next, the start of the Switch 2, you can put quarters into it for extra lives. <laughs> it just gets heavier. <laughs> <You're> like, <Yeah. laughs> well, you jest, but Coin slot. I'm sure there are a lot of games where if they had, like, save items and then locked them behind micropayments, a lot of people would just sort of accept that these days. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's even, I always, I don't know if Pokemon's still like this, but Pokemon, uh, when I was playing it growing up, had a single save slot on each, uh, on each uh, game pack, and that always to me felt like them knowing, oh, if there's two siblings who love this game, you're gonna buy both versions for them because they're gonna be fighting over the save slot, and that always felt grimy. Well, that's probably that's probably me. why there was a red version and a blue version. Yeah, a very such scenario. Yeah, yeah. And then so they'd have I... to work together to unlock all the Pokemon, and all the all the family uh-huh. comes together, and it's Ooh. a wholesome story. So they ah, so they were actually trying to create bonds between the family and not sell an extra thirty five dollar game. It seems like that's the sort of thing they would say they were doing. Yes, yes, yes. And then say, "Excuse me, I'm still counting money." Uh, man, one, yeah, they still do that. That's fucking dumb. What I'd like to see though is <laughs> they still do that. Short, shorter games but with a lot of width to them, very horizontal layered, sort of like Stanley Parable, right? Mm-hmm. That way, those are the kinds of games I like to have a lot of saves in. I have Dishonored. Uh, I'm just curious because uh, I think at some point it was in the loading where it said, be careful because if you're being a naughty one, then there will be a lot of rats. So now I'm just here like, okay, I want to see what happens if I'm really good and what happens if I'm really bad. Mm-hmm. You know, like be super nice this one run and then go back for catharsis and murder everything. I don't think it's that long, you know? So two is pretty manageable, but like having two save files for like, I don't know, Baldur's Gate, dear God. So for some people like you, to be able to freely save is like a fundamental aspect of the enjoyment of the game. Uh, for RPGs. Allows you, to ex- yeah. allows you to experience it the way you want to. Oh, look at that. Absolutely. With a fork. Yeah, there's, so, <laughs> there's also, I mean, a game can sort of take that into its own hands. Like... Uh, Final Fantasy VII uh, Rebirth, when you finish it, opens up uh, not only chapter select, but you um, have kind of uh, different uh, values for each chapter. So uh, there's like famously a, a, a scene where Cloud goes on a date with a character at the Gold Saucer. And who, mm-hmm. whatever character you've built a bond with, you go on a date with them. And it could be like a hot and heavy date or a friendship date. Uh, and when you finish the game, you can go back to that chapter and choose okay, I want to replay this chapter, but I'm going on the hot and heavy date with Barrett, or I'm going on the casual date okay. with, with, oh, um, yeah. um, with Aerith. What was I, wondered if, I wondered if that was the case, because I was, I was playing it, and uh, I assume it was the date. It was like Cloud's in his room, and there's a knock on the door, and uh, Aerith was there, and Aerith mm-hmm. was like, hey, let's, all, let's uh, go hang around at the theme park, because this game couldn't create a sense of urgency if it uh, was staring it in the face. Uh, coming so, coming soon to full rainbow matic Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, <laughs> and I was wondering if that was diff- if much like in the original 
uh, a different character would have been there if Aerith hadn't been the character I had the highest. Yeah, there's uh, this one kind of makes your relationships a little more obvious. Like you do things with characters and they get little smiley faces above them, whereas uh, it, the values yes, are more yes. hidden in the original game. Yes, I heard that. Yeah. Uh, yes, well, it does. It does a very telltale sort of. Ooh, Aerith will uh, like that you will did remember that. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I've yeah. got a bit of a throaty cough. Oh, sick again. Uh, I, I should reload cough. the save from back before I had a cough. Waka waka. Uh, do you Just do you want to go to do you want to go to super chats? I know there's a bunch of there's a bunch of things I have to say. Bouncing. Yeah. Off super chats, let's so. let's go Let's super go. chat nuts. Yeah, and thank you to everyone who's already donated. We appreciate it. Thank you to everyone who supports us on here on, on Patreon, on the Ko-Fi, who just who just puts money in little cracks in buildings and knows that we're gonna find it. We appreciate we, it. We we love having your money. We do. It's great. It's great. We spend it on shit. Yeah, yeah. Things. 3D three <clears> D <throat> sunglasses. All right. Fox D is the first one I have. Uh, saying Super Mega Baseball 3 has the best save system ever. Auto saves after every pitch. One save Iron Man mode. I love it. Jesus. I like that a baseball game is intense like this. This is like fucking hardcore grounded mode in uh, The Last of Us, but baseball. Yeah. Well, the Japanese are pretty baseball mad, and you know how they like to inject drama into things. Shit. Oh, I don't I don't mind those again it just comes down to like what if the game crashes because if it crashes outside of my era then uh, I will resent that game I do like the yes. roguelike solution of like it's instant save so if you if something crashes you're right back to where you were but if you die it's over yeah yeah exactly the two different kinds of reload yeah the, that's interesting the, like <laughs> your save and your consequences are separate yeah. Also, the uh, the the name Fox D reminds me of uh, how uh, Fox D reminds me of Fox Die, which is in Metal Gear, and Metal Gear had the kind of interesting. You'd have to use your codec to call up Mei Ling, and she'd be like, "All right, I'll save your game, but I also want to tell you a parable about your adventure." They, yeah, they really weren't trying to keep that fourth wall intact. No, no, those games were they? Yeah. Because the Colonel would be like, hold down the analog stick. Yes. Stake would hold be down like, huh? the, Hold <laughs> down the A button, etc. <laughs> yeah. I remember one bit of dialogue where he's talking about the tech he's given you. And then he goes, and remember, Snake, all of the tech we've given you is based on currently existing technology. And I was like, well, I should fucking hope so. <laughs> uh, Colonel, what's the alternative? Oh, this is technology based on our thoughts and dreams. The uh, past technology, you know. Ooh. In... Uh, in, in Metal Gear Solid 1, there's a, a, a part where you have to change discs. But then uh, when you go back to Shadow Moses in, Resident Evil, or in uh, Metal Gear Solid 4, uh, yeah. when you hit that point, uh, Ocelot calls and is like, ah, you don't have to change your discs here because we're on a Sony Blu-ray. And Snake's just like, shut the fuck up, Ocelot. <laughs> or Otacon. Otacon, <laughs> not Ocelot. Oh, I said Ocelot. No. I'm sorry. Fake How Metal Gear Boy. you get that wrong? It's Fake Metal solid. Gear Boy. Solid Snake's, you know, hetero Otaku life. Mate. convention. His his beloved husband, with whom they adopted a child. Do you think there are ocelot cons, like conventions for ocelot lovers? Surely. You know, I was watching like YouTube videos from like a reptile expert about his favorite spiders, and he was talking about how you can go to spider expos if you're looking for this specific breed of Goliath bird eater, and not one of the two knockoff breeds that they uh, like literal hell. Available. Why yeah. would I want to go there? Because you're really into spiders, as a That player. sounds so scary, though. Yeah, it's right next to the Arachnophobe Con, like right next door to. CES used to be uh, held uh, simultaneously with the porn convention in Vegas. Nice. So there'd be all like the the sweaty the sweaty tech boys with all the the pornography employees. Oh, uh, time to be alive. Yeah, I would imagine there'd be quite a lot of crossover. Yeah, uh, in the world a lot of cranking, of, uh, world of sweaty, cranky a people. Of, a lot of cranking. <laughs> R. Demore gives 499 US and says, First time catching this live, but it's because I lost my dog this morning. Frowny face. Aww. Thank you for the entertainment and distractions. Yeah, Sorry. distract yourself from it by telling us about it, R. Demore. Good idea. You know what? Uh, it's called it's called grieving, and we all do it in different ways, Yahtzee. Okay, okay. I don't know if I should and like it. I think the best way to grieve today is to stare at the eclipse. Fuck I'm, nice. I'm sorry, R. Demore. I lost a dog. Uh, it's, it can be very sad. 
Uh, Robo Nob the Snob gives 20 euros and says, Only excuse for the single save I can give, making the choices you make irreversible. Frustrating? Yeah. But I respect a dev that wants players to make decisions they can't change just because they didn't like the outcome. Yeah, but on the other hand, Robo Nob the Snob, crashes. As Frost keeps saying. Yeah, well, if it crashes, sometimes I'm like, bud, your game's not that hardcore. You don't need to go like this. <laughs> There's other ways to put in difficulty. What was yeah. it? Was hell was the Hellblade thing real? Where they said if you die enough times, your save just it eats itself. No, 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 no I, it wasn't. It wasn't real. So no, but lied. that created everyone was like, people and there's tension. I loved it because everyone was like, "Oh no, I gotta win this fight because the corruption's coming." Uh, yeah, they just, just lie to people and, to and give them all the saves. Yeah. yeah, pretty much. They literally just lied. There was also, I'm, I'm sure we've brought up this game before, but uh, Steel Battalion was a was a mech game that came with like a $200 controller that was an entire like mech console with knobs and buttons and all that shit. Uh, but the whole thing with the game was if you died and you blew up, uh, you would, it would just delete your save. Like that is it, one and done. However, there was an eject button that you had to press. <laughs> and if you press the eject button, you would lose your mech, but your character and your save would still be alive and right. you have to like buy a new mac to continue yeah. so you had to like that was like true risk reward of like do i do i think i can pull this fight off or do i run away and try to live to fight another day that's interesting there yeah, yeah tiny can had this thing where um if you fell off from a great height right you can still save yourself because you have the little parachute thing mm -hmm. but then you had to make it all the way back so it was actually better to just <laughs> kill yourself like let, yeah let it, yeah let, let yourself just land on your head and then spawn yeah. right back at the top so i don't know yeah. Mm -mm. Jackson Jewel gives five dollars. Says I always saved twice if playing Bethesda games. You never knew when it was just gonna randomly corrupt. I think most of the times they corrupt in a funny way though. Like uh characters like disappearing into the floor. Oh yeah. Are there uh, like ga are there like developers or publishers that you just trust less when it comes to saving? And so you're like, Well, I'm giving you like Ubisoft, you're getting the old three save from me. Whereas like Nintendo, I I kind of trust you. Usually you have polish, so you I only well, need you know, one save to know I'm good. I think you'd be well advised to keep your save files ordered in a Skyrim because uh, they do have a very janky air, and if you aren't saving regularly in a game that feels very janky, then if things fuck up, it's kind of on you. It's like driving a car with no floor. Mm -hmm. I'm it. And complaining that your shoe leather gets worn off by friction. I think, well, good. what did you expect? The car doesn't have a floor. Buy a car that does have a floor, idiot. Yeah, look, Starfield feels like a double saver. Just just by the look yeah. of her, you know? RPGs yeah. and any game that feels like my PC's huffing a little bit. Like, all right, just, yeah, just that, double that, save real quick. That car doesn't have a floor or a ceiling or two of the wheels. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a unicycle. Well, it's a bicycle. It's a bicycle with a chassis. Built for two. Uh, Shaisa Poster gives 599 and says, three saves per campaign is perfect. If you screw up, Marty, it's skill issue, Marty. One main and two backups in case games does Ubisoft and fails. <laughs> I feel like a lot of that was, was directed at me. <laughs> what do you think about games that judge you by how many times you saved over the course of the game? Like, this is something the Silent Hill games used to do a lot. I think you get a star time. rating at the end, and the best way to get the highest star rating in like Silent Hill 2 was to only save twice in the entire course of the game. Yeah. Nah, it's like uh, going to an all-you-can-eat buffet, and they start looking at you funny on the sixth serving. I'm like, it said all-you-can-eat. <laughs> you put the same You wanted me to only have four, then let's say four plate limit. <laughs> well, that's on you, bud. Yeah. Yeah, like, that's the... It is that meme, my brother in Christ, you made this game. You yeah. literally control everything I'm capable of doing here. So, I think those are very... Um, th to me, those feel of akin with the Japanese-centric design of grading you after battles in like character action mm -hmm. games. Um, because the games I think of that sort of do that are like uh metal gear resi uh silent hill all do the thing at the end where like ah you saved this many times and you died this many times you fired this many bullets so you are a zombie dog that is your rank this time well done um yeah it's just fine. It's, it's not really like a serious thing though it doesn't no i think it's for the kinds of people thing. who are going to replay a game five times to get every ending yeah it wants to get like the the fox speed run like, yeah how fast it takes to get the fox rating Anyway, 
Uh, Alex Armstrong gives five dollars and says, "Do what the Crash Bandicoot remake did: three manual save files and one auto save for the casuals. Maybe even throw in a reminder after every other hour to save." So yeah, I'm there with Marty. I would like a hundred, mostly because you've got the the auto save, um, the four that are mine, and then if somebody else wants to play, they need another save, the one that's not mine. I mean, there's no real reason why you couldn't just have as many saves as your hard drive will fit. Well, Jay says yeah. it'll like, eat it up real quick. Is he I, 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 Jay knows more than me, game. but I feel like he was overestimating how big a save file is. I'm probably underestimating, because I think it's one kill. But... It depends on the game. Crash yeah, Bandicoot like can't be that big. Right? There's not that much to remember. <laughs> yeah, you are essentially I'm downloading not. the game again. Yeah. yeah, you just have to remember you know, how many levels you've beat, which how crystals you've got. How many Wumba fruits you got. Yeah. Does it save how many lives you got? Because I know Mario doesn't. Crash? Mario, yeah. Gal- Mario Galaxy didn't save how many lives you had. So if you like quit Mario Galaxy and came back in, even if you had like 60 lives before, you'd be starting off with three. Yeah, they didn't care, though. If you lost them all, they're like, oh, no consequence for you. Yeah, Mario you- games that still keep track of lives feel weird to me because it'll just be like, oh, it's game over. And you're like, well, what happens now? And they're well, like, that's oh, why they start you where you were. <laughs> that's why they stopped keeping track of lives in uh, Mario Odyssey. Odyssey. It's just like I think the main reason point. they kept. I think the main re- I think the only reason they kept it in was that they could keep giving you one ups and treat it as a reward. I mean, just lie, about, again, up, lying to children, thinking that something bad will happen, is still terrible. one up mushrooms are iconic in Mario. You can't just not have them. Yeah, no. I am a big fan of of continuing to lie to children, though. So that seems good. Yeah, we can't sell merch if they're not there. When else are you gonna play the funny little jingle f- that you get when you collect a one up? Every time he like nowhere, his toe, that's you know, where stubs his toe on a corner. No, do, 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 do. that one. Ah. Yeah, it's a nice little one. Uh, Lampy gives ten British pounds and says end users can't be trusted with manual saving. Giving them the power to save whenever will cause them to lose four hours of progress when they get used to save scumming and select load instead. Oof! I've done that. Oh god! I've mm. done that. It was a it was a humbling moment. A genuinely humbling moment. Yeah, I mean, a, I like a, are, a, are you sure? You know, yeah. Like, you know, Fuck off. Uh, yeah, I'm sure. Sh- no, I'm not sure. I, mean, I wasn't you know, sure. You know, like, oh, same button. Yeah. <laughs> I would <laughs> tap for save, double tap for load. <laughs> like, oh. There should just be buttons on my desk. I could probably set that up where there's like one button that's the save button and one button that's a load button. Yeah. Right. You know, that's one way you can discourage. Uh, users from saving too much is just make it really hard, long and arduous. I mean, I remember saving in Earthbound where you'd have to call your dad. I thought that was nice. I mean, he would tell you how much money you had in your account. Yeah, and he'd, but it would like be 500 like little text boxes. Yeah, and he'd always scary. like do that token one at the end where he tells you to turn the computer off and go to yeah. sleep. Yeah, work hard, <laughs> yeah. but don't work too hard. Yeah, I don't want to save because I have to talk to my dad. <laughs> Imagine it was great. Your dad, you never meet your dad in the game because he's just always at work. And yeah. so, like, your mom's always at home, and you have to call her, or else you get homesick. And then your dad's just like, "Oh, yeah, sorry, I, uh, I'm at work, but I put some money in your account, so go beat up some more dogs to buy more baseball bets." Yeah, I noticed it doesn't alleviate homesickness to talk to your dad. Yeah, you could tell where the relationship is there. You use your dad for money, and yeah. you use your mom for love. Wayne, dad. Presumably, some kind of salary man. Yeah. Oh, now I'm just picturing your dad as like a a, a fucking Yakuza character. <laughs> That's great. He's probably getting very drunk in the evenings, like most Japanese salarymen. Sleeping on a bench. Mm. Uh, Shy Poster gives 599 euros and says Going into RPG, games should lock choices get campaign wide till game is finished and credits roll. Play it again for different outcomes, like True Gamer. It better be a whole different game. I don't want all that. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. It's, I it's think... rarely that consequential. I also think that yeah. if you just buy something, like I don't know, if you buy a DVD, you can choose. You could go to chapter select, and I guess that's mm-hmm. like a whole different like can of worms. Of like, I bought a game, so everything should just be unlocked at the beginning. But like, I don't know. I think. I yeah, I can I can sell the food, but what you do with it and how you shove it up your own ass is your yeah. that's, that's your prerogative. Let me tell you, there's a lot of ways to shove it up my ass. Mm, Pierogi yeah, again, I'm, Marty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm struggling to think of uh, ways to shove things up your own ass beyond uh, the basics. 
Uh, get a running yeah. start, yeah. you know. Yeah, get a running stick. start. Yeah, get a running start. Stick it up dry. Loop yourself right. up. Get a mm-hmm. yeah. Stick stick a funnel up there first. Phone a friend. Fifty fifty. Um, anyway. Tinker gives five US dollars and says, I personally like having save points in the overworld because they act like chapters stroke pages in a book where it gives a clean place to stop playing. Yes, that's the uh, PlayStation 1 game save points uh, thing again, I suppose. Uh, If you can save at those specific points, it's like trying to find your place uh, when you stopped reading at at a new chapter in a book rather than trying to find your place when you stopped reading mid-paragraph. Yeah, it at least gives you uh, somewhere to regain your your footing when you jump back into the game. Uh, and you're like, mm-hmm. okay, I'm in a safe room, and I now know where I am, as opposed to, like, I stopped in the middle of a fight, and I need to immediately ramp the action back up as soon as I start again. Right, yeah. Especially, it's good on the book analogy, because I'm like, sometimes I need to, I found where I was, but I, I still go back, like, one or two pages. Yeah, just give me a little a running, running head start. start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get back in the groove of things. Yeah. Dr. Theo gives $2 and says, it's got nothing to say, just my weekly donation to you. You know, there's an easy way you can do that, Dr. Theo. It's called Patreon. You're my favorite, yeah. Dr. Theo. I don't know many Dr. Theos. Maybe Patreon's against the Hippocratic Oath, and Dr. Theo oh. cannot break the Hippocratic Oath. Okay. Well, that would mean using Patreon is in some way harming us. It is well, there's know. other things, like, you know, you can't give information, and uh, they, they're just... Yeah. Maybe he's worried with the pierogies to go up your ass. Is he worried that the money is corrupting us and making us want to push pierogies up our ass? Mm-hmm. Could be. Uh, Humane Shield gives one ninety nine and says any game with lockpicking is going to abuse saves. Yeah, especially if the locks the lock picks break because if you do the mini game wrong. God, yeah, and you need to like break a bunch of lock picks in order to sort of get the flow of the mini game. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's like certain things where like there's fun difficulty and there's fun consequences, and then there's like oh fuck off game consequences of things. Um, mm-hmm. You know, if something's <laughs> gonna feel like busy work or punishing you for the sake of punishing, it's kind of like I don't I don't need to deal with this. Like I have a, I have a job, I pay taxes, I don't need to deal with this. Uh, well, Skyrim, you only get one lock pick, as far as I'm concerned. So. Yeah, uh, I guess I take the position that it's on the game to impress me, not the other way around. Yeah. I'm just like, is this the hill you want to die on? You know, this lock picking game you put in here. Yeah. Alex Armstrong comes back with five dollars and says, "Password saves are broken because you can look them up and skip to the end of the game." One advantage is you skip hard levels in games like Mean Bean Machine. Oh, Doctor Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine. Uh, I absolutely would do that all the time. Talking about the Lion King, there's like the the. Uh, before the stampede level i think it's like literally the second level of the game i'd be like i can't do this level so you gotta like jump in the heads of all the drafts and shit and i'm like i can't i can't I just fucking can't hand, handle this level i can handle the rest of the game i can't handle this level do you think let's plays ruin the password economy because now you could just mm. you could just watch the game what do i need passwords for well what if you needed a pass you needed to take a little quiz every chapter of a video oh god i guess what we are o'brien video games i guess what we learned from let's play is that uh they don't really take anything away from the game if you're not actually playing the game. Because it turns out most people are perfectly happy to buy a game if they see someone play it and want it. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's the strength of video games. It's like trying to ruin a roller coaster with a video. Just mm. different experience. Yeah, pretty much. Fox D gives five dollars and says, "Building arbitrary randomness into your game is just begging players to save scum." Looking at you, Fallout Three speech checks. I did hear about that. People were complaining with Baldur's Gate 3, where it's like, it feels a bit out of character for my, you know, very well-built, strength-maining character to suddenly just get a one and flub it. Like, it's almost ruined well, welcome my immersion. To Muth, welcome to my arguments with Jack Parker whenever he fails me with a natural one when I've got the silver tongue perk. Maybe if you'd said so you said please, liked... he'd let you. <laughs> no, he just likes fucking with us. <laughs> yeah, he's mean like that. Sounds about right. How do uh, how does safe scumming work in a in a thing like an XCOM where like shots are uh, percentage based or whatever? Like, is it the same percentage? Like, has it already decided what the percentage is, or can you take a shot that's ninety percent, miss it, reload, and then take the shot and make it? I'd imagine old games like that are seeded. Well, if you have a seed, then um, 
sure, if you fire once and then reload and fire again, uh, mm. then it's going to be different. But if you fire once and then uh, do something else random and yeah, then like fire again, the seed. Yeah. yeah, then, it, well, then it's the going to... Well, the seed keeps going, different. you've just gone to the next sequence. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Hmm. Interesting. Anyway. Eric Weichardt, who could just talk to us. I mean, he's the producer, but he just likes <laughs> giving us money for some reason. Uh, gives 50 asses and says, who needs saves when you can rewind X amount of minutes? Looking at you, Pikmin 4. But the mechanic of returning to a previous day, Pikmin 3, is cool. I do like... Yeah, I think it's the, the, the fact that time is, the time is rewinding is what separates like the Sands of Time time rewinding uh, salvation gimmick from the uh, just come back to life salvation gimmick in the original prey mm -hmm. right. it's that time has to rewind we have to try again it's not just uh, no consequence back to where you were yeah hmm. i like uh games that give you a little bit of that um to sort of like allow you a little wiggle room for fuck-ups um fire emblem uh three houses at least uh had a had a kind of a rewind mechanic to where you're like oh man i really I, I was I was playing this battle really well for 15 minutes, and then I made one dumb decision that it was a you know cascade of fuck ups after this. And so you can rewind to that decision and be like, all right, let me, let me instead of re redoing the whole battle, I'm going to go back to this, and, and you know <laughs> everything will be fine. Let me go back to a time when I was younger. Why I was younger, <laughs> but I was still naive. Yeah, I hate who I've become. He says, and uh, Eric donates because for some reason his is bugged out and it always shows his fifth anniversary of chats for every chat he puts in. I don't yeah. know why. Happy fifth anniversary. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Peter Parker SL gives five dollars and says, "I used to avoid any games that didn't let me save whenever. My life's too hectic to save. Wait till I get to a save point." I'm guessing you were a PC gamer back in the day, Peter Parker what SL. What yeah, I guess that's the other part of this conversation. Is I feel like if you were growing up playing PC games, I'm sure you handled saves very differently throughout the '90s and whatnot than console players did. Uh, Killer Beal gives 19.99 and says, "Congrats on the book release, Yati. I picked it up and started listening, and before I knew it, it was three in the morning. I've already finished it. Also, I can't make the stream and listen to it later. Hi, future me. Oh. Hi, Killer Beal. Oh. I'm glad you enjoyed the book. I'm glad you're such a savvy consumer as to pick it up. If only everyone watching this were as savvy a consumer, and could also pick it up from Audible.com right now. Yeah, hard copy. Absolutely." Yeah, bud. For absolutely no cost if you've uh, got uh, uh, any audible credits. Uh, no, the print version's coming out later. Maybe That's like uh, probably in about a year or so. Mm. Are you going to release it on vinyl? We no, should. that would be dumb. Yeah. How I want to go to the much... thrift store and find your book there. How much data can you put on a vinyl? Like in like bytes, do you think? Oh, in bytes? I don't know. Two. <laughs> yeah. you, you could put like 30 minutes of music yeah what's that worth in like, uh, computing games yeah are there can you run a game on vinyl 30 minutes of music that's gonna be like whew, maybe on two megabytes side, yeah i know a cd is basically just vinyl but with like space tech right it's the same principle yeah space yeah, vinyl. yeah yeah space vinyl, laser vinyl sure it's like rings of data that is read by a needle or yep. z z some such it's the same like fundamental principle it's just miniaturized on a cd mm -hmm. anyway robo not the snob gives 10 euros and says is safe scumming the issue or is it a symptom i feel some people save scum because of issues that make safe scumming the only solution e.g save states in emulated rpgs because of unskippable cutscenes well, um, that goes along with that Gabe Newell's quote that there are no pirates, just dissatisfied consumers. Yeah. Uh, like uh, like the old Uno one. The Uno Twitter account once tried to remind people of the rules for um, the plus four draw card mm -hmm. thing. But obviously saying that we were all doing it wrong, but someone responded saying, thank you for the card game. We'll take it from here, though. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's my attitude. Yeah, that's when the, you create something, it's about the world. Whatever, just, yeah. yeah. Thank you for the lovely game. I'll take it from here now. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's admirable, I'd yeah. say. Uh, Alex Armstrong gives five dollars and says two things to not do is disable saves at the last part of the game, security breach, and delete saves after dying a lot. Hellblade, hoots a newer sacrifice. But again, we're pretty, pretty sure that was that. just an empty threat, which yeah. worked because we. But I security was... breach, security breach absolutely does just disable saves at the last part of the game, and I have no idea why. It's very dumb. 
It just made me instantly want to stop playing. That's very dumb. There's a. I don't want. I'm not going to go into spoilers because it's a very uh, <clears throat> amazing moment. But a near replicant, which is the remake of the original near game, uh, has uh, a, a thing that happens at the end that is like one of it. Like takes the idea of saving your game and imbues it with emotion uh, in a really in a really incredible and effective way. So we'll not spoil it. Um, we'll only say that, and that is not satisfying to anyone who does not know what I'm talking about. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. It's like that thing in the old Heroes TV series where the dude goes into the future and leaves his girlfriend there, and then travels back in time and prevents that future from happening, so his girlfriend is just disappeared. N- no, I don't remember, remember that happening in Heroes, though. I remember Heroes. There's well, a cheerleader, there's a time traveler. Yeah, this was after the show started getting shit. Oh, I think I stopped watching by then. Anyway, uh, underscore X1A gives 10 Canadian and says, Marty, your optimism is aspirational. Frost, your pragmatism demonstrates great strength. Yahtzee, your cynicism is an expression of passion on the subject of love letters. Well, that was just really nice. That was incredible. Is that our dynamic then? Apparently, I've been called pragmatic many times. Yeah, yeah. It's, I think I'm, it's just, it's just the voice. The funny thing is, I'm not. I don't consider myself an optimistic person. I, I just relative play what, to I play the one on TV. Us, I think very, relative very to the up. rest of the staff. Well, I don't consider myself a pessimistic person. There's a lot a of things cynical, I like. Not pessimistic. Yeah. A cynic is a pessimist okay. who can hope. Well, in the original, like classical definition, a cynic is just someone who questions everything. You do that a lot, yeah. What's pragmatism do? Uh, well, the pragmatist just adapts, I suppose. Mm, there you go. Yeah, it's like it. Uh, Hjorth87 gives 50 Danish kroner. Says, which of you would respectively be the good, the bad, and the ugly in the old movie? I tried last week, but you answered with your waifus. Well, it was a waifu chat. That's why. The waifu chat. I, um, I have not seen that movie. Can I bag Z bad? Sure. Yeah, he's, he, yeah, he's got, kind of got like a black hat, man in man in black kind of vibe to it. There Which one's the Eastwood? Uh, the good I, and the ugly is kind of like the wild card. I thought he was the ugly. No, he's he's good. Eli, Wallach I think we're getting good. away from the important debate, which is which of you two is the ugly? Who is the ugly? Well, the ugly in, wasn't in the ugly because he was ugly. They call him the ugly because he was a wild card. I'll take it. Okay. Yeah, gladly. Yeah. Very early yeah. day. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Oh, no. Yeah. See, not ugly at all. Look at look how handsome he is. Eli Wallach over there on the right. Lee Van Cleef in the middle. Oh, he even looks like he even looks like Charlie Day a bit. What? Yeah, he does. <laughs> he does. Lee Van Cleef is a man with too many Lees in his name. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Parents should have called him something else. They were being yeah. redundant. Yeah. I should watch that movie. Isn't that like the third in the series? Uh, it, it well, yeah, because it follows the Clint Eastwood character in a fistful of dollars and for a few more dollars. It would be like a Mr. and Mrs. Galilei calling their son Galileo. There you go. Why don't they name games like that anymore? That's so good. A fistful of dollars and a couple more dollars. I want that. Instead of just a fistful of dollars and a fistful of dollars too. Oh, there was an old text adventure game uh, way back in the day called A Mind Forever Voyaging. And I love that title. It's a title that flows like an Arabian carpet. I think it's beautiful. I've never, I've never seen an Arabian carpet. You never saw Aladdin? He had magical properties. Whole I just new thought, world. You know, I didn't know uh, if it was conditioned or if it was magic. I believe uh, Mel Brooks originally, when he was going to make a sequel to Spaceballs, called Spaceballs 3, The Search for Spaceballs 2. Because there was yeah, no well, Spaceballs in, 2. Because in Spaceballs 1, he makes a gag how he'd call the sequel Spaceballs 2, The Search for More Money. Yeah. Oh, that Mel Brooks, though. History of the World Part 1 never it's comes out with clever. the part. Just calls it clever. Part 1 right off the rip. Real yeah, clever. but the, the actual film's shit. Yes, it is. Aside from the Moses Mel, bit. That's it. Mel Brooks has been really up and down, in my view. I think I've talked about this before. Blazing Saddles, The Producers, A+. Plus. Young uh, Dracula Dead yeah. and Loving It. Uh, no, in the bin. Young Frankenstein. A+, plus again. Men Although, I think I've... Well, someone once told me that if you like it, if you consider yourself a Mel Brooks fan, chances are you're just a Gene Wilder fan. That's me. Yeah, sure. I do like uh, I like Robin Hood Men in Tights though. He's in there. Yeah. Oh, no. He's in there. Yeah. 
ain't no Gene Wilder film. Wow. Rude. Uh, Fox D comes back again with another $5 and says an exit save is a chance for some cheeky writing the option should be called time for work or mum is yelling at me lean on the fourth wall <laughs> oh well that would be like that tiresome thing the old doom used to do where every time you quit they'd throw off a message there was something like like oh yeah sure just leave next time I'll be waiting with a baseball bat yeah it's like, mm. fuck off I paid for you up negative yeah. me Because back then, the game's more of a captive audience, I suppose. That's true. Ah, gives one ninety nine and says, "What's the word of the day?" Uh, let's go with um, tremulous. Uh, according to Merriam-Webster, it's fatuous. Oh, fatuous! I was, I was I was pretty close. Yeah, to describe something such as an idea or a mark as fatuous is to say that it is foolish or silly rather than yes, sensible that... or logical. Yes, thank you. I know what fatuous means. It's not for Good. you. It's, it's not for word. you. We're teaching. We're teaching our students. You're that, you're that one guy in my comments. Well, I'll say a, a word and explain it. And they're like, I already knew that word. It's not for you. <laughs> I personally, I go back and forth between fatuous and facetious. I like facetious. You know what I like about facetious? What's that? Mm. I'm it's, one of the few, it's one of the few words I can think of. Uh, ten. It's one of the... No, wait. Right. Nine. What about fahesis? Well, uh, well, <laughs> as I was about to say, facetious is one of the few words I can think of that contains all five vowels in alphabetical order. Get the fuck out of here. That, that can't yes. be true. Fa, C, just. Yeah. True. C is a vowel. No, no I'm I'm the C. I was uh, being facetious. <laughs> oh, and so if you're being facetious E... You can you can toss the you can toss the yeah. y the sometimes y in there, there too. Yeah, no, I I can only think of one other word in which that's the case, and I'm not going to say it till the end of the podcast to give the chat a chance to figure it out. Well, can you tell us what it starts with? No. You're looking for a word that contains all five vowels that appear once and only once and in alphabetical order. I mean, Eric's, Eric's got it right here. I just uh, abstemious. Bacterious. Oh, you spoiled it. It's uh, abstemious. So what is that, what's that word all about? Majestious, abstemious. I think. Yeah, is that like abstaining? Um, you know what? I'm not yeah. sure off my head. Uh, yeah, abstaining from wine. What? Oh, there you go. What? <laughs> <laughs> okay, sure. Incredible. Moving on. Uh, Lampy gives five pounds and says, "What is using eight hundred gigabytes of space on my hard drive? It's completely full." Marty with two thousand FF seven saves if they unlocked it. I don't think I don't think there's that. Many. I don't think it takes up that much space. I'm gonna go look. No, I feel no, you. I already took the game off my hard drive. I feel you would. I feel like, uh, I mean, I can't you imagine... like to replay games, you know? I, do. So, yeah. I can't imagine it taking like saves needing to take up much space because most of them are just you know text files with data indicating where everything is yeah but as games get more complicated i imagine that well even so i mean yeah. what do you need to record say where you are in like a ubisoft sandbox just where you are in the plot your yeah. x y and z coordinates uh inventory. Yeah. your inventory which missions have been completed and which haven't that shouldn't take more than a couple of pages of text Pages. Oh, I was thinking like, how oh, could it be? You know, just a picture of Goofy or something. Like, they just need knows? to start optimizing. That's what they need to do. Who know? None of us are AAA developers, so I wouldn't know how to compress we... if you pointed me to it. No. All we can do is speculate. Uh, Fox D gives five dollars and says, "Fox die." That's what I haven't heard before, Marty. Usually, it's Mulder from the X Files or the Fantastic Mister Fox. I just uh... think of a fox giving someone the D. Oh, I think Possibly I'm thinking of Fox Fox. Die because I just replayed Twin Stakes, uh, uh, but I uh, I do think about the X Files a lot. So you can also be Fox Mulder, who has a pornography addiction on the show that they just hint at every couple episodes, which is pretty funny. Was wasn't that a reference to the fact that David Duchovny was in softcore porn before he like? Made oh, he's also he was like a sex addict. Well, aren't too, they all too much cranking for a boy Fox D? Oh man, him and Kennedy. What can you do? Well, you know, if you're a handsome man and you're a sex addict, that's just, you know... That's, that's the worst. That's like being an alcoholic in a bar. 
I mean, you, you be know, careful with that. at least it means the sex can be nice to watch. It benefits us. Yeah. Anyway, Kate Brockhausen gives five dollars and says it's Eclipse Day. Also, Yats, my boyfriend's crush on you has only intensified after the newest Yahtzee tries video. Lol. What kind of stuff did you do in that video? A little nip slip. Uh, what happened? I- I took all my clothes off and jerked off to camera, since you ask. Incredible. Uh, I did ask. I feel like what, we, that would have got brought up in a meeting at some point. It wasn't point. during Pepper Grinder and Frog Monster, I'll tell you that. <laughs> no, I suspect, I suspect it was uh, the bit where I was uh, we did a supercut of all the times I made a stupid grunting sound every time I failed in a difficult um, game about climbing. Uh, okay. you, could that, grunts. you could probably use that to dub over some very suspect footage indeed. There you go. Add that to the XCOM mod. Yeah. There you go. Uh, Alex Armstrong gives $2 and says, Crashes equals bad hardware you bought and owned. Ugh. That can't be well, true. Is it? That's a bit of a I feel like we're victim blaming at that point. Bit of a devil's advocate position Alex Armstrong's taking there. Nah, the devil's got enough advocates. Fight for an angel or two. And my okay. hardware. There's not, it's not like all PCs have the same hardware, you know? That's the problem. If only we could all play on consoles, everything would be better. Uh, Dr. Theo gives five dollars and says, "Postal Two would make fun of you if you saved more than once within like a minute." My grandma can beat the game if she saved as much as you do. That sounds cute, and I guess it would be a pretty easy thing to keep track of. A lot of games will tell you how long ago the last save was. Yeah, I like and a like game, a game that like doesn't... that, it makes sense that it's like. I like that games sort of genre that do. Games. I like games that do unexpected things in response to the player's actions because it's mm. always fun. Like, do you ever used to watch? Do you ever used to watch like the Strong Bad emails on Homestar Runner? Tell no, us. a sea no, of no, blank no, faces. No, I'm sure several people in the audience did though. Two of us, yeah. like a puddle. Well, what they did with those was because they used to be like flash movies, so they'd always be like little Easter eggs you could click on. Oh, those the things. Of the cartoon went along. Yes, those things. Yeah, I remember that. I was like, "What's with the luchador?" Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and then uh, there was one episode of those where towards the end, like, there'd be a long pause after he finished talking, and then he'd go, uh, no, stop looking for Easter eggs, there aren't any, we couldn't be bothered. Uh, the old first That's the sort of viewer, thing, right? I want to see more of that in video games, like, responding to the ways the player is playing and ways that sort of call them out. Like the, like the, uh, Psychomantis thing. Mm-hmm. I think it's a bit of a cop-out for some, like, uh, NPCs, I'll go through the whole dialogue, and then they're like, I promise there's nothing more here. Leave. I'm out of dialogue. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> Please continue playing video games. Yes. Yeah. That's Max of an extremely exasperated dialogue writer. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Red Dwarf 42 gives five dollars and says, F5 is mostly always quick load. Do you think a quick save should be F8 or F9? I think you got it backwards, Red Dwarf 42. I would, uh, I would bind F5 to quick save and uh, F9 to quick load, or possibly F6 to quick save and F7 to quick load, because that's what it was in Half-Life. And just bind it to your left mouse button, right mouse button. Do away with it all. Super well, efficient, then. Playing Quake 1, I feel like you do need to do that. Mm. How do you shoot? Uh, by pressing the tilde key, I don't know. Space <laughs> bar. <laughs> Love a nice tilde key. Oh, and then Red Dwarf 42 comes back with $5 and says, I got that backwards somehow. I blame insomnia. I am not operating heavy machinery. Well, that's good. Uh, I don't know. F5 is a scary one because I do be refreshing a lot of web pages just in general. Oh. Uh, also, shouldn't the buttons be very far away? It's yeah, like I was just thinking. Yeah. Yeah, you're more likely to accidentally press quick save. Yeah. When you should be like quick load. Tab and number lock. Uh, Count A. Two buttons that are far away. <laughs> Count A gives two euros and says, How much are beans in Mexico? They're free, holeless. Beautiful. Yeah. That was beautiful. It's because uh, in, uh, in Spanish, beans are called the free holes. I feel like we could do more with the pun there. Like free holes. Uh, hmm. It's not How... holes, it's holes. Yeah, but. You could still pun it off holes. Father, so, son, and hey. Holes ghost. Holes yeah. ghost. What? <laughs> hmm. Do you think anyone's ever called them free joles? I do. Give me a can of those free joles. Free joles, oh, yeah. <laughs> Frigilis. Yeah, Frigilis. Frigilis. Frigilis, the lesser known Greek philosopher, Frigilis. 
<laughs> the Mexican Greek philosopher Rick Joel. Every Ernst. time he started to spit knowledge, he was like, "Oh God, I got I got shit. I, I, I got I big have, farts coming up." Yeah, I have to make this now. Yeah. Uh, Tyrell 007 is member for three months in ad free podcast. Says, "I yeah. save scummed the f out of Disco Elysium to get my story. Yay or nay?" See, that was an yeah. interesting one to see how it failed. Very interesting there. You I'm do sure. you, Tyrell Dollar Seven. Live your best life. Yeah, it was also short enough to where <laughs> after I got done with the one, I was like, oh, I want to do another playthrough, but this time I'm absolutely just a big muscle head, you know? Yeah. Well, I don't think there's any right or wrong way to play them. And if you're only planning to play something once, then, you know, and you want to get your desired outcome out of it, then treat it that way. Yeah. But what is your desired outcome? Maybe, uh, Try and let it surprise you. Yeah. Because maybe by not sort of engineering it towards one thing, you might find something surprising that you like. Yeah. yeah. Unlike in Skyrim, where if I pick a lock, it's probably just going to be cabbage in there to take. Probably going to be cabbage. Yeah. yeah. Back in the old days of TV, you sometimes you'd watch the show you wanted to watch, then you just leave the TV on, and maybe something else interesting would come on, and you yeah. wouldn't have thought to stay up and watch it, but you're glad you did. Yeah, so I always knew a show was good. My dad would like stay there standing watching it with whatever power tools he was doing as he was passing by and he's just there that's it if, it'll, if it stops your project it's good tv humane shield gives 499 and says the term software will handle it is the tech bro equivalent of i have faith in jesus yeah like... there you go All right. Yeah, we're what a, uh, we're just appreciating your witticism there. You made that was that was just clever. That was clever. It didn't need any building upon. There you go. So we should just have a little laugh track sound, like a fucking radio DJ or something. Yeah, little soundboard. Oh no! Don't tell Nick. <laughs> He'll bring the soundboard back. Tinker gives five dollars and says, "I need a rewind feature because I will forget." Looking at me rewinding every time in Persona Three uh, Reload, I go to Tartarus so I can get my fortune. Yeah, Persona 3 Reload has a nice thing to where you can rewind um, to, like, the past couple of, like, uh, yesterday night, yesterday afternoon, yesterday morning, <laughs> like that kind of thing. So if yeah, I used it a few times playing where I would wake up on a Sunday and run out and do something and then forget, like, oh, shit, I should have checked the TV to see what they were selling, you know, what the item of the week is, because it's usually something good. Yeah, so I've that done nice. that. I did yeah. that more than once playing that game. Mm-hmm. Uh, Robo Knob the Snob gives five euros and says, Marty, if you had to pick one, the save file ending in Near Replicant or the second mm. set of opening credits from Automata? Mm. Uh, the Automata one was probably more surprising because that was my first Near. And so by the time Near Replicant came out, I kind of understood what they were going for. But the uh, save file ending in, uh, in Replicant really, really, really hit me. Really emotional. Hmm. Did it give you a near death experience? Oh my oh. god, it did. Those yeah. games are great. Those yeah. games are great. Let me tell you, that yeah. man knows how to make video games with cool stories that intertwine their their mechanics and also feature scantily clad robots. Yeah, and that's what using a save file literally is. It's a near death experience. Yeah, that's beautiful. Uh, yeah, no, I I got stuck once forever in Skyrim. I manually saved in front of a bear that was mauling my ass right as I went to save. Yeah, I don't know. That's a per you know, perpetual near-death experience, that one. I mean, that's an extreme case, but uh, I kind of liked it when I like would just try to live with my fuck-ups when I was playing something like Half-Life. Because there's a lot of health in that game anyway. So, uh, uh, if I just like accidentally blew myself up and got myself down to 30 health, I'll just be like, yeah, you know what? I'm going to live with this. Gordon Freeman is a klutz. Yeah. He's and gonna, now he's... Tread carefully now, for, until now I he's gonna have, health. Now he's going to have to play conservatively for a bit. Yeah. And that's, and that's what you lose in the games where they just regenerate health after every yeah. combat sequence. You just find a box to hide behind and wait till your shield yeah. goes up. Oh, no. I feel yeah. like Nick could have appreciated a save system. He's playing the old card one, and uh, that was uh, not regenerative health. And he would... Like, get through with, like, 10 health, and there would just be one bullet just bing, right before yeah. he got into the building so that the save would actually activate. Yeah. Poor bastard. Well, cod. Cod. It's a kind of fish. It is. Delicious. Yeah. Oh, yes. Well, they should make a game called um, Cathartic Heroism Under Bravery. 
Just Good. so we could have like a bunch of themed fish acronyms in video games. I think someone made halibut once. I don't remember what it stood for, but it was Ooh. it was trying Ooh. to do something away with it. Leave that one with me. Uh, harassed <laughs> Android likes integrating bread under Thatcher. Turbulence. Thatcher. Oh, it always comes back to Thatcher. It's always Thatcher with you. <laughs> yes, those androids had a tough time under Thatcher. Yeah. And the Irish. Margaret. And the Irish. Yeah, and the, the Irish and, and the, the androids. That's, that's what we minors. forget about. Yeah. <clears throat> Seven letters, incidentally. Halibut. No, I <laughs> right. <say> Thatcher. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, no, Thatcher's eight letters. Oh, one last super chat. Just I was about to start wrapping up. Adam Karchner gives five dollars and says, "Hey guys, following since the escapist and finally got to donate. Missed the discussion. Finals week. But I just want to say I appreciate what you do." Adam, thank you very Is much. I hope your finals are going well. Is it finals week for everyone? Uh, spring break, I believe. So yeah. Oh, they just That's got done. Final. Aren't finals usually in May? It's like it's I thought spring. If you're, if you're in I high thought, school. I thought they were back from spring break now. I don't know. I haven't been Actually, in school every weekend, in, like at spring break. Over, over ten years, I haven't been in school. I think my kid was yeah. on spring break. We last haven't week. been in school for longer. <laughs> yeah, I definitely don't I, remember anything. I know people who are in school. <laughs> well, that's true. I have a I have a child in uh, preschool. See, so do I. <laughs> I tell you what, you Americans are really spoiled with your summer vacation. I'm not American. Well, uh, we I'll... should have what three months. We should have three months. Yeah, you get three months. I've got six weeks in the UK. How many fucking bank holidays do you get? That's okay, true. we had a we had a few half term week breaks scattered throughout the year, but still, yeah. I would actually rather have that. I'd rather have like many mini breaks throughout the year than three months. By the time right. you're in like the end of July, beginning of August, you're like, what am I doing with my life? Yeah, yeah, you'd be like, I've completely forgotten everything I've learned in school. Yeah, no, it's like, don't you guys get like the Good Friday and then the Easter Monday for some reason off? Other places uh, do that. We don't. Ours is the weekend. Yeah, it was a bummer. Yeah, we get we get an Easter break. We get like a couple of weeks for Christmas. Yeah, well, thinking about it, adding them all up, we we'll probably get about the same amount of time off school. But still, we don't get it all in summer when the weather's nice and it's nice to go out and have fun. I blame Disney. There you go. <laughs> anyway, Robo Nob the Snob gives two euros and says, donating just to keep listening to these jokes. Oh, good for you. And then Ribbon Off the Stop gives another two euros and says, been editing for hours and I need the company. Man, we'll just we'll go out and make some friends. We we'll no, he's editing. He's working. He's editing. Well, Could get into a Discord. Club rendering. <laughs> jo- join the Discord and chat with people there. We've got shit to do. I gotta, I gotta go stare at the sun, see what's going on out there. Yeah, mine, It looks uh, bright, so I think mine, this eclipse might have been a lie. I got 20 minutes before this eclipse comes through. You guys aren't stopping me. Yeah. Fair enough. Well, uh, I guess we'll wrap things up then. Thanks for listening to Windbreakers Podcast. Uh, I guess we didn't really reach a point on this one. Hey, save systems. They exist. I think the point point is don't make your shit crash, and then I'll be fine. If it's the perfect game with no crashes, I'll take whatever save system you have. Wise words for us all. Uh, I guess I was up. There's your sound, boy. It sounded like chickens at first. I didn't know it was clapping. I was a little thrown for a second there. That was terrifying. I hated I thought it. Something was, I, thought I one hated of you, it, uh, and I thought someone was, was injured. <laughs> no, we're getting was... rid of the soundboard on this one as well. No soundboard on this one. This is the second <sighs> podcast I've banned the soundboard. <laughs> exactly. Now, that's the sound you play when someone kisses someone. Aww. It is or, when, like or when I bring out my adorable dog. Hang on. Yep, he's a sluggity bed today. Jesus, yeah, you make really a sound. pulled them from deep in your coat. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Isn't he, Josh? Aww. I don't even know which one of you is making the sounds. It's not what me. do you think? What? I is don't Eric? know. I definitely don't know how to do that. Well, anyway, I was Yatsi Kershaw. I was joined by Sebastian Ruiz and Marty Sleever. Yeah. And if you want more stuff from me, I've got a lovely, lovely Dragon's Dogma 2 fully ramblematic episode coming out on Wednesday. And I'll be, f- and just as you're reeling from that, I'm going to have another semi ramblematic coming out on Thursday. Can you tell us what that one's on? It's about 
the moment in a game where they introduce the monsters. Ooh, Ooh. first encounter. Nice. You talking yeah. about Rezzy? Uh, amongst other things, yes. Yeah. Uh, and uh, of course, don't, don't miss the Yahtzee Try stream on Wednesday afternoon either, where I play new games and uh, c comment on them from the first impressions. Yeah, and the edited and videos you... are back. So, yes, uh, one the edited video from the past two weeks went up this weekend. Yes, one came out last Sunday. Check that out if you haven't seen it yet. I think uh, some folks were asking if we're going to go back and make edited versions of all the other streams we did during that, and I don't think we're going to. That's those are just going to well, exist if, in stream form. Well, if Jesse wants to, I don't think we'll, any any of us would stop him. I can't stop anyone from doing anything. If I'm being honest, I have no power here. I just want to go stare into the sun until it's baked into my eyes. I mean, as long as I don't have to write, go back and write like reviews for all the games I did. Remember this game you played? I, Remember Penny's Big Breakaway? Talk about it. Yeah, can't be bothered. Uh, yes, yeah, so that's that. Uh, what are you guys gonna plug? We'll see, oh, we'll we'll um, He's very Bob every Monday. You got a fresh new cold take. There's a lot of melancholy, a lot of ennui, a lot of dooming and glooming in the industry. How's about the bright side of things for once? Next week, you get more doom and gloom, but right now, let's have a nice, nice light chaser, <laughs> a nice yeah. little positivity. Mm. How nice. Uh, excellent. And then, yeah, we'll have uh, the normal uh, schedule all week. Uh, Hidden Gems crew will be back uh, this evening playing more Void Strangers, which they started a few weeks ago and got to a, a juicy part. Uh, and then all the all the normal streams. I think there should be Bully and and uh, Firelink and Call of Duty and Devil May Cry. And Frost will be joining Nick and I on Wednesday uh, at noon Central. Uh, we'll be doing a special watch along to the Triple I Initiative uh, Indie Showcase. So like our normal showcase watch along, but it's going to be a lot of uh, uh, cool upcoming indie games from the developers of indie games that you've enjoyed over the past few years. Will we get a Hollow Knight release date? Probably not. <laughs> Tune in to be disappointed Imagine. anyways. Yeah. Well, speaking of indie games, something I forgot actually is that we're finally putting out uh, some of our GDC footage today. Oh yeah, That's, have... that should be going up shortly after this. Yes, shortly after this we'll have a video summarizing all the lovely stuff we did at GDC. Mm-hmm. Because of the embargoes are finally up. No embargo bust in here. Not at all. So I look forward to that. Uh, I think we've got edited videos every day this week. I believe so. Yeah, I think we got Backdrop, yeah. we got Fully, we got Semi, we got Design Delve. Holy smoses. We're too good to you people. You don't pay us enough. Next week, it's going to be a real bad week. We're going to do bad shows, yeah. bad, bad streams. It's going to be great. Yeah, I'm just going to... Flick V signs at the camera for five minutes. I'm just gonna okay. smoke, I'm just gonna smoke heaters in silence. And Jamie Duell, thank you so much for joining Tip Tar. Thanks, Jamie. Bye. Thank you. Uh, we'll be off now. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Eric. Ah, uh, I, I accidentally paid the opening first. <laughs> that would be cool.